Radio Raheem here with Spencer Furon. You know, usually I don't wear my glasses in interviews, but I feel like a little Jake and Elwood energy, you know? Yeah, some on. some Blues Blue Brothers Blue. turn to Smooth yeah. Brothers. I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. I'm actually feeling the cumber band as well. You're not mucking around today. Look no, that. no. I mean, you know, you got 17 buttons there, like a, yeah. a proper British gent. Like, we pulled out all the stops, but nobody came dressed better than Francis Ngannou because he was wearing a crown, and boy, did he deserve it. He put in a very, very incredible performance simply because nobody expected him to do that. Nobody did. I mean, look, all right. First of all, when the knockout came in the third. Knocked down. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. The knockdown, because it knocked me out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was looking at this thing You're like it's impossible. Yeah, it was, wasn't it around three? Okay. Right. Well, listen, was How do you remember it? Yo. I can't. This whole thing is like this whole thing. I was caught in the ambience of everything that's being put on, the show before the show, the 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 the, 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 the fight, the fights earlier, and then we we walking a couple meters around the corner to go into the big stadium. It was incredible. The whole thing was incredible. I mean, obviously, I'm winding up a little bit about uh, the knockout and all that, but the reason I speak this way is because. There's no way a first-time fighter, even an MMA world champion, should be able to step into the boxing arena. And I really should say a first-time boxer because mm -hmm. he's a damn sure a fighting man. But he went in there and fought the heavyweight champion of the world, the guy who a lot of people have his number one pound for pound, not only got a split decision, knocked him down. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my book, that's a win. No, no, thank you. Like, let's call it as is. A moral victory, yeah, and a great moral victory on, on, the, on the moral compass guide was it spun like a gig for, <laughs> for, for Francis Ngannou because that was, that was incredible. That performance is incredible. You just shouldn't be able to do that. And I think, I don't know, man. I think we got we to gotta take something from this and like reconsider like what what is what is this crossover thing possibly something we're now gonna have to contend with i mean if you look at the numbers no no if you look wait, hold on hold on if you look at the numbers from logan and ksi's uh prime no, i'm not talking about that but wait, wait, with, with those okay. numbers and then this performance yeah it's gonna be hard to shake crossover boxing yeah, i know it's not gonna no, no because you still have a man that's a professional athlete in in francis and Gandhi. he's a professional athlete that's yeah. what he is and he's a and he's yeah, so is michael phelps but he shouldn't be knocking down terence crawford you know what i mean no, no but michael <laughs> yeah i know yeah. right but he's a professional athlete in combat sports and and if you look at the, the the bigger guys in ufc a lot of them not, they're not takedown guys they're not they're not floor specialists they they're more stand up and what he did was absolutely incredible and he is a moral victor right the fight was still close but this is how it is it's like you know when you was a kid and you know, you'd get you'd get a, a, a pepsi and you'll drink like i don't know 25% of it and you'll shake it and you'll let the fizz come out let the fizz come out mm. you'll taste it and it will still taste like Pepsi but it hasn't got the fizz mm. and that's what we saw tonight with Tyson Fury he was shaken and there was no fizz but it was still we could still taste Tyson Fury but everybody pause everybody's everybody's screaming yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about right <laughs> Right, that's very yummy. It's early hours, but I want to go to my bed. It's like four o'clock in the morning there, right? But, but I would say like, what we saw was something incredible. And yeah, we got controversy to it. And we shouldn't forget Francis in, in, in Ghana now because his stock has just risen and his name is reverberated around the world. In and like when the knockdown happened, I said, My goodness, Grace, you're gonna knock him out of here, yeah. right? And like, wow, that's all I gotta say. It is, it's, it's just wow. It's Would wow. you want to see this fight again now? Most definitely, but I do want to see, but, but I have to be real. Mm. I do want to see the Usyk so I could see an undisputed champion because we hadn't had one in, in so many years now, so I would love to see that, but. Francis, Francis Ngunu did 
did Ngannou, sorry, did better than Derek Cesaro and Dylan White combined. Does this change your analysis for Fury Usyk? No. And because, and the old edge of his styles make fights. Mm. And, and yeah, and because of that, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe the flatness of Tyson Fury um, tonight, he's really, because I know Tyson, he's going to take it hard on himself. And these are the things where I've seen this happen before. He fought a guy called John McDermott early in his career. Everybody thought he lost that fight. And what he did in a rematch was something incredible. He was doing Roy Jones in there. And Tyson Fury 6'9 was hitting the boot and throwing shots over the hands and everything. So I think if he needed a firecracker, then he's just got it. Because you got to think nearly a decade ago now when he, when he, when he, when he beat Klitschko, the British public turned on him hard. They hated him. He went through the depression. He went through all of this kind of stuff. And he come out on the other side. And maybe maybe he got kind of comfortable with the fact that he's this guy now. You know, he's got the Netflix special that's, like, doing really well. He's, he's like, he was like Mickey and Rocky. You got civilized, Rock. Maybe now, maybe now, he can become uncivilized. And we can see something. But... All the credit in the world, I'm going to say this again, should be given to Francis and Ghani. That was, we saw something really, really special. And what a way to start uh, uh, having uh, boxing in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. You know, is Francis and Ghani a heavyweight contender now? One million percent he is. Does he beat any of the guys at the top of the division? Well, you know what? If he hits anybody, right? It's only because Tyson Fury knows how to fiddle. He's a very experienced guy. He, he, he most probably came out of his mother's womb with boxing gloves on, right? Mm. So anybody else who hits like that, they're going to be in trouble. But what I do like about him is the fact that how he's pressing forward. I, I really, you know, I was, you know what? Because he didn't, he, when I was watching him, he didn't look like, to me, somebody who was just first time in a professional boxing ring. He didn't. There was nothing that I saw in, in Nganu that I was saying, you don't deserve to be here. No disrespect to, to, to Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather. Conor McGregor was doing things that you shouldn't be in a boxing ring, right? Mm. But this man was doing things. Even when he switched to Southport, he looked orthodox in being unorthodox. He looked really comfortable in there. And I was like, all the credit in the world should be given to him. Listen, we saw something special here. Do I think it was a close fight? And it was a close fight. But because we, we saw a flat Tyson Fury, the moral victor, or give him the round, we'll give him the round because he was in it and he was pressing forward. But if you look at the skill work and it was, and like the, the punches being thrown and everything else, then right, Tyson Fury was very fortunate to get the decision. And do I say like the right man, if they gave her a draw, I wouldn't have complained. And like, right, if they gave it, I'm saying, if they said, oh, it's a draw, I wouldn't complain by it because there were rounds where Tyson was stealing the rounds, but it weren't looking pretty stealing the rounds, right? Mm -hmm. and, but when Ngannou was pressing, he was pressing. And Ngannou can say, well, maybe I should let my hands off a little bit more, but in his back of his mind, everyone's talking about, oh, well, you have these, these problems with your fitness and, and maybe that was in his head. But remember, MMA guys fight five minute rounds. Mm -hmm. He put in a gallant game, performance and something that will be reverberated around the world and we've now seen an uncrowned heavyweight champion and that's what he has become he's become the uncrowned heavyweight champion and the whole world is nuts because i've just seen a man come from the ufc and give somebody who people are talking about as one of the one of the one of the best and gonna go down in history as an all-time great and now this guy who's just come from nowhere has done this. So what's he going to do now? You know what I mean? And the person I blame in all of this is Mike Tyson. <laughs> come here. <laughs> Radio Raheem with Spencer. Fear on. Peace.